For the last lesson of chapter 7, we're going to take a look at how to graph the original function given the reciprocal function, so doing the inverse of what we did in the last lesson. So it says the graph of a reciprocal function in the form of y is equal to 1 over f of x, which is equal to 1 over ax plus b, where a and b are non-zero constants as shown. So we can see that this is the reciprocal of a linear function. It wants us to sketch the graph of the original function. Well, to sketch the graph of the original function, there's a couple of things that we're going to do. The first thing that I am always going to do is I'm going to mark the points that I know my original graph went through. So, uh, let's use green for this. So, I know it has to have gone through this x-intercept where it lines up with the asymptote. I know that it is going to have gone through the points when y is equal to 1 or when y is equal to negative 1. And then beyond that, it tells us a point that this one goes through. So it has the point of negative 2 and negative 1 over 4, which means that my original one would have gone through the reciprocal negative 2 and negative 4 over 1. So it's going to go through this point. Now, if I know that this is true, then I should be able to sketch my graph out using these points and just drawing a straight line to sketch, well, this is what my original graph would have looked like. Now, if I'm determining the original function of the graph, if I clearly went through all the points, I drew a straight line, well, in this case, I can see that my original or graph had a clear y-intercept here at 0 and 4, which means I should be able to do the slope-intercept from this. I can say that I had a y-intercept at 4, and then I had a slope going from this point to this point where I went up 4 and rate 1, so I have a slope of 4. So if I'm using the slope and y-intercept method, I can say that, well, my original function would have been y is equal to 4x plus 4, or f of x was 4x plus 4 in my original function. I can also use the x-intercept and a point in order to solve this. Well, like I said, I know that given the point, I can state one of the points that my original one went through was negative 2 and negative 4, and I have the x-intercept at negative 1. So I have two points that I know my graph would have gone through. I know it would have gone through negative 2 and negative 4, and I know that it would have gone through the point of negative 1 and 0. I can use my slope formula to check this and say, well, if I had 0 minus negative 4 over negative 1 minus negative 2, then that's going to give me 4 over 1 Sorry, not 4 over 4, 4 over 1, or a slope of 4. I can put this into my slope point form and say, well, I have y minus y1, or y minus negative 4 is equal to my slope 4 and x minus x1, or negative 2. This is going to be the same as y plus 4 is equal to 4x plus 2. I can multiply that 4 into the brackets. y plus 4 is going to equal 4x plus 8. And I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides to get y by itself. y is equal to 4x plus 4. And I get the exact same answer I did in the last case. 
this method is really useful if it doesn't have a clear or exact y-intercept that I can pull from my graph. For example 2, the graph of a reciprocal function in the form of y is equal to 1 over f of x is equal to 1 over ax plus b where a is not equal to 0 is shown. So once again, if I have the ax plus b, it's going to be a linear function. So it says that it wants us to sketch the graph again, which is what we're going to do. We can see the imaginary asymptote halfway between these two functions and it's going to cross at this point. We can also see that we have a clear point for when y is equal to 1 and when y is equal to negative 1 and then I can stretch out my graph from there preferably using a ruler and see that that's what my original graph would have looked like. If I want to state what the equation of this is, well, I have a clear y-intercept here at 0 and negative 3, and I have a slope of 1 over 1, or just 1, which means that my equation is going to be y is equal to 1x minus 3, or just x minus 3 there's my original equation. For example 3 we are looking at a reciprocal of a quadratic function. So it tells me an exact point that it goes through up here. In my reciprocal if that's 0 and negative 0 0.25 or negative 1 over 4 my original one is going to go through 0 and negative 4 down here. I can also use the asymptotes to state other points that I know it's going to go through. I know it's going to go through the point of negative 2 and 0 and I know it's going to go through the point of 2 and 0. Well now we have enough information from my original one to solve for what it would be in vertex form. I can use my P, my Q, and then just pick an X and a Y to substitute in. So I'm going to state that in this case, 0 is equal to A bracket 2 minus 0 squared minus 4 which means that 4, when I move that negative 4 over, is going to equal, well, 2 squared is also going to be 4a, which means that 1 is equal to a. So my function is going to be y is equal to 1 x squared minus 4, because my p value is 0. I don't really need the brackets in there. So if I have an a value of 1, then I know it's going to go up 1, right 1, up 2, oh sorry, right 2 and up 4, right 3 and up 9, left 3 and up 9. And my original function is going to look something like that. I can use the same process for the second one here. I can state, well, I'm going to have the asymptotes here are going to be points that it goes through. I'm going to have the invariant points are going to be points that it goes through. And then I'm going to take this and say if my reciprocal goes through 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 is the same as 1 over 5, then it's going to go through 0 0.5 and 5 over 1. 
So I'm going to have a point of 0 0.5 and 5. And that's going to be my P and Q for this one. I can also state, well, I know another point that it goes through is going to be 2 and 0. And I can use this information to solve for what the equation would be. So if 0 is equal to a bracket, I'm going to use 2 for x minus 0 0.5 for p squared plus 5 is my q value. Then negative 5 is going to equal, well, 2 minus 0 0.5 is going to be 1.5 squared. is going to give me 2.25a. And when I divide both sides by 2.25 and put it into a fraction, math frac, I'm going to get 20 over 9 is equal to a, which means that my original function is y is equal to negative 20 over 9 x minus 0 0.5 squared plus 5. And then I'm going to draw out approximately what this is going to look like. The last part is going to be our application. So the intensity I in watts per square meter of sound equals 0 0.004 multiplied by the reciprocal of the square of the distance D in meters from the source of the sound. Well, then I know that I is going to equal 0 0.004 multiplied by 1 over d squared. Well, I can rewrite the 0 0.004 as a fraction. i is going to equal 1 over 250 times 1 over d squared. And I'm just going to simplify this to i is equal to 1 over 250 d squared. When I graph this function on my calculator for a domain of d is greater than 0, then I'm going to state that I have a 1 over 250x squared is going to be my equation. And I'm going to change my window settings to really zoom in. I'm going to say negative 0 0.1, going up to 1, and 0 0.1. Negative 0 0.1, going up to 1, and 0 0.1, because we're going to see that we're dealing with very small numbers in this case. And with these really small numbers, my graph is going to look something like that. What is the intensity of a car horn for a person standing 5 meters away from the car? Well, the intensity is going to equal 1 over 250 times 5 squared, which is going to be 1 over 6250 w per meter squared. And that's it for chapter 7.